Other Voices, Other Rooms by Truman Capote. So, um, I did a video um, some time ago uh, about Truman Capote's um, nonfiction novel, In Cold Blood. Um, and I, I liked that book. It, it was good, I, it, a little bit underwhelming, and, uh, but I enjoyed it. It was, it was intriguing, and it kept me engaged, but it, I just thought it was overall just a teensy bit underwhelming. Um, however, I had bought this book as well um, because I wanted to give Truman Capote a fair shake. And I can, having read this book now, I can say that Truman Capote was a master, because this is a masterpiece. Um, I, again, I've only read two of his books now, but I, but I, that, that being said, I would be willing to go out on a limb and say that this is probably his masterpiece, because this is uh, phenomenal. Um, he didn't have a, a, he didn't have an extremely large uh, body of work, um, he had like two or three or maybe four novels and then the the well-known novella Breakfast at Tiffany's and then In Cold Blood. This was his first book. This was the first thing he ever wrote or published at least. Um, it is a southern gothic novel uh, with a different bent uh, than most other Southern Gothic novels of that time period. Namely, that it deals in a somewhat muted fashion with um, homosexuality in the Deep South in the early 20th century. Um, so what is this book actually about? What is the plot of Other Voices, Other Rooms? Well, it is, a, it, it, it is about a boy, I think he's 12 or 13, named Joel Knox. And Joel is going to live, he thinks, with his father, um, kind of is kind of in like a bayou uh, called Scully's Landing. His mother has just died, and he's going to live with his estranged father. Um, Joel is different than most boys um, his age of that time period, in that he is um, kind of. I mean, this is this is pretty. I'm gonna say this is uh, this is a at least somewhat autobiographical novel in that um, I I think Joel is kind of basically just like Truman Capote because he's very soft spoken. He's rather effeminate. He's kind of um, he's kind of uh, dainty. He he doesn't. He's very kind of removed from what a boy was expected to be like in that time period. Uh, and and I really, really, really liked Joel as a character. I thought he was a really fantastic uh, character uh, because he gives us such an interesting uh, perspective into that time period to see what, it's, what it was like experiencing that era from a different viewpoint than the than the norm of that time. Um, so Joel is, uh, and, and I said that this book, and this book is often um, categorized as a gay novel or queer lit. Uh, I don't, I would not really count it that too much because it's very, very, very muted. Um, the word, um, it, the word gay or homosexual, I don't know that it's even used in here. Um, and it's not really the prime objective of the book, I, I, don't, I don't think, was to... I mean, it deals, with, it deals with really, I just think, the concept of being different. Of being different from what you were expected to be in that time period. Uh, is Joel gay? Um, it's... Im implicitly yes explicitly no he there's no real 
is hard to explain, um, but I'll get to that. So Joel's mother has died, and he's going to live with his estranged father in this bayou called Sully's Landing. Um, he gets there to find that uh, he isn't yet allowed to see his dad. We don't know why. And the only two people that he sees there is his eccentric and flamboyant and flamboyantly uh, gay <laughs> cousin Randolph and um, his, I guess it's his aunt. Yeah, his aunt. No, 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 no. It's actually his stepmother. I'm sorry. Not his aunt. Stepmother named Amy. Uh, both of these characters are pretty eccentric. Randolph is Randolph is really the character with which this book grapples with homosexuality the most because he is um, he is actually truly outright forthright um, gay. Um, it doesn't and it doesn't really make that big of a deal out of it. I would have thought with a book written um, where it's it's set in this time period, which is like late twenties, early thirties. Um, uh, Louisiana, I think. I think it's set in Louisiana. Um, I would have thought that it would have dealt with the concept a little bit more, but um, it didn't. It was that was very background stuff, and I'm glad because I didn't. I didn't want it to just be concerned with one thing. Um, I, I wanted it to be more of a broader experience than just limited to a gay novel, and it's very much not. It is a very it is an excellent coming of age story, and one that uh, is very uh, interesting to read because it gives us a different perspective than what you would normally read about in that time period. It gives a it gives us a perspective on what it was like to be different, whether that means explicitly homosexual or not. Um, either way, uh, it gives us it lets us see what it's like to be different growing up in that time period. So Joel, uh, there's no real plot to this. It doesn't really have any kind of a forward moving plot. Joel just kind of has to ad adjust to life in this um, d dilapidated mansion in this lonely bayou with these two eccentric characters. And he also makes friends with a young girl named Ida Bell. And this is um, an interesting aside. Um, uh, if you don't know, Truman Capote and Harper Lee of To Kill a Mockingbird fame uh, grew up together. They were best friends growing up as children, uh, and they 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 both show up in each other's books. Uh, the character of Dill in uh, To Kill a Mockingbird and Ghost of the Watchmen. Uh, he's, yeah, the character of Dill in To Kill a Mockingbird and Ghost of a Watchman is um, pretty much just Truman Capote, and the character of Ida Bell in this book is pretty much just Harper Lee. She's a tomboy, and uh, this is where I the book really came alive for me. For me, it really came alive with, with their relationship to each other. And um, while I really love this book, it was an incredible read. Capote was a master of language. It is, it is absolutely beautiful to behold. But uh, I really wish he had done more with these two characters together because this is where the book is truly at its best is in their relationship. Because Truman Capote and Harper Lee, they grew up together and they both were not what was expected of of them in that time period. Um, Truman Capote was gay. He was he was quite effeminate and soft spoken, kind of dainty, just like just like uh, Joel in this book. And Harper Lee was a tomboy, very rugged, kind of outgoing and tough. And uh, they kind of looked out. I think they kind of looked out for each other. They kind of looked out for each other growing up because they they were both going against the grain of society, uh, in, of, of the of the society in which they were living. And the relationship between Joel and Ida Bell in this book is the best part of the book because they're both they both realize that they're they it's kind of they're the only people that really understand each other. 
because they're both in the same boat and they're not what they're supposed to be. And it was really just a, a really sweet relationship. It really was. They've become friends, even though they're kind of standoffish to begin with. They both kind of come to understand each other. And it's, it's really, that's the heart of the book to me. Um, I'm, I don't know if, there, if, if I spoil this, I'm sorry. It's just that there really isn't much of a plot to spoil. Um, Joel, eventually, at the, the culmination of the book, it's the, the current of the homosexual undercurrent in this book is, it, it is an undercurrent. It's not dealt with uh, openly or up front. It is a very muted background kind of thing. Uh, Joel just kind of is throughout the book struggling to, he's, he's kind of struggling to He's kind of struggling to find his place in the world because he is so different. He's he's not at all he's not at all like the other boys his age, and he's cr- trying to he's trying to find himself in this world. And so the book's culmination is him just kind of um, coming to terms with himself and accepting himself. Uh, and if 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 like it's implied that that is he's coming to terms with his own sexuality. Uh, but that's never explicit is the thing. Uh, I don't, I don't know. I, you know, and, and, and I've said it, I've said it, I've said it before and I'll say it again. Books have always been able to deal with, uh, taboo subjects, um, when other mediums couldn't. Uh, so did, I don't know why Truman Capote didn't deal with this more, um, openly in this book. He could have, it's not like this. I mean, it's not like this wouldn't have been published. I, I mean, it would have, um, I think Carson McCullers, I think his contemporary Carson McCullers, her novel uh, Reflections in a Golden Eye is also about um, being gay in the South and the, the old South. Um, I And that got published, so I don't, I, I don't know why he chose to do it this way, but I'm glad that he did because it isn't, um, no, nothing against gay or gay literature or anything like that. It's just that I don't, normally like to read books that just make themselves, limit themselves to being one thing for one person. Um, uh, I like books that are kind of more universal, and um, this book is very universal. It is, uh, it's, it's, it's first and foremost just a really great coming of age story, and it's, oh, it's gorgeous to read. Um, I, part of why I was underwhelmed with In Cold Blood was because the writing uh, never really blew me away, but it sure, this book sure fixed that. Uh, this book proves that Capote was an absolute prodigy with uh, language. He, the, the images that he um, paints with this, with his words in this book are striking. It's just, it is sumptuous prose. It is excellent to read. But yeah, it's, it's a, just a coming of age tale about a lonely kind of, it's about kind of a lonely misfit boy coming to terms with himself and who he is in this, in the old South, um, and being different and realizing that and accepting his own difference, uh, and making friends with a, another child who is just as different as he is. I, I, I thoroughly, thoroughly, thoroughly enjoy this book. If I had to give it a rating, I would probably give it a, probably an A minus. I'd probably give this a good A minus. This is a, this is a crackerjack book. This is a fantastic read. Um, It gives a great insight into a, uh, into a a, a bygone time period. uh, And it gives a great, um, insight into what it was like to live um, differently than the norm in that setting. It's it's just a really great book, y'all. If you haven't read it, I would recommend that you do. It's not long. It took, I think I read it in two days. It, it wasn't long. It's only like, I don't even know if it's 200 pages. It's, it's just a really good book. Um, this, um, this, uh, this, this more than made up for my mild disappointment with In Cold Blood because this book uh, floored me. Um, 
But anyway, yeah, that is Other Voices, Other Rooms. If that sounds like something you might be interested in reading, I would encourage you to do so because it is a really, really good little book to read. Um, incredibly well written with some really great and memorable characters to it. Um, uh, but anyway, yes, that is Other Voices, Other Rooms by Truman Capote. Have you read Other Voices, Other Rooms? If you have, what did you think of it? Uh, have you agreed with my take on it here today? And if not, either way, I'd love to hear it. Um, if you haven't read it, I would very much encourage you to do so. It is a great book to read. It's very warm and human and compassionate, and I always love that. And um, yeah, you just, it's, it's a really good book. Anyway, yep, that is Other Voices, Other Rooms. Let me know what you thought of it, if you've read it down in the comments, and as always, remember to like and subscribe, and until next time, peace.